Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Today we're here to announce that over the weekend, the department disrupted two extremely damaging cyber threats, the financial botnet known as Game Over Zeus and the malicious software known as CryptoLocker. Game Over Zeus has secretly diverted millions of dollars to bank accounts of criminals across the globe while CryptoLocker, a ransomware scheme, has shut out hundreds of thousands of users from their own computers and data <clears throat> and demanded that victims get uh, paid to get access back to their own machines and their own information. We have also identified and charged one of the leaders of the Eastern European criminal cyber gang that is responsible for these schemes. If Jenny Bogachev, a Russian national, has been indicted in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for his role as an administrator of the Game Over Zeus botnet. Bogachev, a true 21st century criminal who commits cyber crimes across the globe with the stroke of a key and the click of a mouse, is also charged in a newly unsealed criminal complaint in Omaha, Nebraska for orchestrating a related botnet scheme. These crimes have earned Bogachev a place on the list of the world's most wanted cyber criminals. As alleged in the unsealed indictment, Game Over Zeus is the most sophisticated and damaging botnet we have ever encountered. Frequently targeting the computers of small and mid-sized businesses, the Game Over Zeus software intercepts passwords and other private information that can be used to conduct wire transfers, and then initiates or redirects wire transfers from victims' bank accounts to foreign bank accounts controlled by the criminals. The individual fraudulent wire transfers conducted through Game Over Zeus commonly exceed $1 million. At least one fraudulent wire transaction amounted to $6.9 million. Security researchers estimate that between 500,000 and 1 million computers worldwide are infected with Game Over Zeus, and that approximately 25% of the infected computers are located here in the United States. The total losses worldwide are unknown, but we believe that losses exceed $100 million to U.S. victims alone. Because many of the victims are small and mid-sized businesses, their accounts typically do not have the same legal protections afforded to consumer accounts, so such losses can be devastating. CryptoLocker is a form of ransomware a type of malicious software that prevents victims from accessing their computer files until they make a ransom payment to the criminals. This is the most sophisticated form of ransomware we have seen. Once it infects a victim's computer, CryptoLocker encrypts its files and displays a ransom note on the screen, instructing victims to pay hundreds of dollars, typically in the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, to receive a password to decrypt their files. As of April 2014, CryptoLocker had attacked more than 200,000 computers, and more than half of those attacked occurred here in the United States. In its first two months of operation alone, it has been estimated that the criminals behind CryptoLocker collected over $27 million in ransom payments from victims seeking to get access to their files. As you will hear described in a moment, this law enforcement operation deployed innovative, legal, and technical approaches designed to block and disrupt these malicious computer codes. At the same time, we use traditional legal tools to collect and seize evidence and to identify and charge those who are responsible. We work with private sector security experts to master the Game Over Zoo software and expose its weaknesses. We obtain criminal investigative order from a federal court to identify the infected computers, and we obtained a civil order from the same federal court to establish a new server so that the infected computers would be redirected and stopped from surreptitiously communicating with computers controlled by the criminals. This operation simply would not have been possible without the strong partnerships we have established with other governments and with private industry. The Game Over Zeus botnet affects victims around the world and rests on cyber infrastructure set up by the criminals in a half a dozen countries. So our success has depended heavily on our close coordination with our law enforcement counterparts around the world. 
and we have worked extremely well with private sector industry leaders who provided necessary assistance to identify and research malware and to pinpoint and fix the software vulnerabilities that the criminals have exploited. This flexibility and these combinations of traditional and innovative legal and technical tools and of multinational and multi-stakeholder partnerships are what is required to combat modern cyber threats like Game Over Zeus and CryptoLocker. And now I'm especially pleased to welcome Leslie Caldwell, who has recently taken the reins as the Assistant Attorney General for the Criminal Division of the Justice Department. I would also like to uh, welcome to the stage, and you'll hear from him, David Hickton, the United States Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, Robert Anderson, the Executive Assistant Director of the FBI, and then finally we want to welcome Phyllis Schneck of the Department of Homeland Security. All of these people will discuss various aspects of this matter and the successes that we've had. Uh, Assistant Attorney General Caldwell. Thank you. Um, thank you, Deputy Attorney, Attorney General Cole, for the warm welcome. It's a pleasure to be back in the Justice Department after a 10-year hiatus, um, and it's an honor to serve as the head of the Criminal Division. I am reminded, though, as we appear today, about how much the cyber threat landscape has changed since I was last a federal prosecutor. Evgeny Bogachev and the members of his criminal network devised and implemented the kinds of cyber crimes that you might not even believe if you saw them in a science fiction movie. By secretly implanting viruses on computers all over the world, they built a network of infected machines, or bots, that they could infiltrate, spy on, and even control from anywhere they wished. Sitting at their own computer screens, the cyber criminals could watch as the game over Zeus malware intercepted the bank account numbers and passwords that un unwitting victims typed into their computers and networks in the United States and elsewhere. And then the criminals would turn that information into cash by sometimes emptying the victim's bank accounts and diverting the money to themselves. Typically, by the time the victims learned that their computers had been infected, it was far too late. The crypto locker scheme, by contrast, was, was brutally direct about obtaining victims' money. Rather than watch and wait, the cyber criminals simply took the victim's computer hostage until the computer owner agreed to pay a ransom directly to them. They used sophisticated encryption, which as you know is a tool that was originally designed to protect data from theft, to make it impossible for victims to access any data stored on their computers. So the criminals effectively held for ransom every single piece of data on the computer, including private email, children's projects, business plans, family photographs, every single important and personal file that was stored on the victim's computer. In order to get the data back, the victims had to hand over cash. And with, as with Game Over Zeus, once the victim figured out that they were infected with the crypto locker malware, it was too late. As the Deputy Attorney General mentioned, these schemes were highly sophisticated and immensely lucrative. And Bogachev and his co-conspirators did not make them easy to detect or disrupt. But under the leadership of the Department of Justice, federal prosecutors, FBI agents and analysts, foreign law enforcement authorities in more than 10 different countries, and numerous private sector partners, uh, we joined together to disrupt both of these schemes. So here's what we did. First, on May 7th, in coordination with the FBI, Ukrainian authorities seized and copied key Game Over Zeus command centers in Kiev and Donetsk in the Ukraine. Then on Monday, May 19th, as you will hear from U.S. Attorney Hickton, we obtained sealed criminal charges against Bogachev in Pittsburgh, charging him with illegal hacking, fraud, and money laundering. We took still more steps on Wednesday, May 28th obtaining civil court orders against Bogachev and his co-conspirators based on federal laws that prohibit ongoing fraud and the illegal interception of communications. These orders allowed us to cause the computers infected with Game Over Zeus to stop communicating with com computer service servers controlled by the criminals and instead to contact a server established by the court order. The court also authorized us to collect information necessary to identify the victim computers so that we could provide that information to public and private sector entities that can help those victims rid their computers of the infection. At the same time, our foreign law enforcement partners seized critical computer servers used to operate CryptoLocker, 
which resulted in CryptoLocker being no longer able to encrypt victim files. Beginning in the early morning hours on this past Friday and continuing throughout the weekend, the FBI and foreign law, law enforcement began the coordinated seizure of computer servers around the world that had been the backbone of both Game Over Zeus and CryptoLocker. These seizures took place in Canada, France, Germany, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, the Ukraine, and the United Kingdom. Recognizing that the seizures alone would not be enough because cyber criminals can quickly establish new servers in other locations, our team began a carefully timed sequence of technical measures. These measures were designed to wrest from the criminals the ability to send commands to hundreds of thousands of infected computers and to direct those computers to contact the server that the court authorized us to establish. Working from command posts in the United States and at the European Cybercrime Center in The Hague, the Netherlands, the FBI and our foreign counterparts, assisted by numerous private sector partners, worked around the clock to accomplish this redirection and to defeat various defenses built into the malware, as well as significant countermeasures attempted in real time over the weekend by the cyber criminals who were trying to keep control over their network. I'm pleased to report that our actions have caused a major disruption of the game over Zeus botnet. Over the weekend, more than 300,000 victim computers were freed from the botnet. We expect that number to increase as additional computers are powered on and connected to the internet this week. We've also already begun providing victim information to private sector parties who are poised to assist the victims. I'm also pleased to report that by Saturday, CryptoLocker was no longer functioning and its infrastructure had been effectively dismantled. Through these court authorized operations, we've started to repair the damage that these cyber criminals have caused over the past few years. We're helping victims to regain control over their computers and we're protecting them from potential future attack. Over the next few days, our investigators and prosecutors will continue working with private sector partners to notify infected victims and provide links to safe and trusted tools that can help them rid themselves of Game Over Zeus and CryptoLocker and then close the vulnerabilities through which their computers were infected. We will work with our foreign partners to continue the disruption of the botnet's technical infrastructure and to identify additional victims. And we will do our best to ensure that the operators cannot reestablish control over the infected machines and continue their lucrative enterprise. These legal and technical measures, as cutting edge as they are, are far from a complete solution to these sophisticated threats. We fully expect that these schemes will reemerge and will evolve as the criminals target and infect new victims. That is why we are combining these measures with criminal charges against the defendant, Evgeny Bogachev, for his role as the administrator of both of these schemes. We are asking Russian law enforcement to take action to bring this defendant and those working with him to justice, and we will continue working with our counterparts to do so. As Deputy Attorney General, General, excuse me, General Cole stated, it's only really by combining traditional law enforcement actions with the type of innovative and technical uh, legal measures announced today that we can begin to fully address cyber threats. I want to thank very much all of those who participated and contributed to this operation, and in particular to our private sector and international partners who worked with us, us so closely on this sophisticated operation. And now I would like to invite U.S. Attorney Dave Hickton of the Western District of Pennsylvania to make some remarks. Thank you. Good afternoon. I would suggest that if you use a computer, the information that we are providing to you today is very important. The dollar losses and destruction wrought by Game Over Zeus and CryptoLocker made it necessary for the United States to take action now using every possible legal tool. This past week in the Western District of Pennsylvania, we took court authorized civil action to dismantle one of the largest networks of infected computers, the Game Over Zeus botnet. Pursuant to that order, the FBI launched a sophisticated technical operation to sever the lines of communication within the criminal Game Over Zeus network of infected computers and redirect the infected computers away from the criminal operators. In addition, we have filed criminal charges in Pittsburgh against an individual who is a leader of this criminal organization and an administrator of the Game Over Zeus botnet. 
Eugenie Bogachev is charged with conspiracy, computer hacking, and financial crimes. Starting in 2011, Bogachev used Spearfish emails to infect computers with Game Over Zeus malware, to hijack computer sessions and steal confidential and personal financial information. Bogachev and his conspirators then exploited captured financial information and employed money mules to funnel the stolen money overseas. Bogachev victimized companies in western Pennsylvania and throughout the world. For example, in October 2011, Bogachev targeted a Pennsylvania composite materials company and infected it with Game Over Zeus malware. While the intended losses were much greater, within a matter of hours after banking credentials were compromised, hundreds of thousands of dollars were being siphoned from the company's bank accounts. Another example which illustrates the cryptolocker threat is the experience of the Swansea, Massachusetts Police Department. Last November, the police department systems were infected when an email which came from what appeared to be a trusted source turned out to be the cryptolocker virus which locked up the police department's files. Swansea has acknowledged a ransom payment to unencrypt their files. It is obvious that Bogachev did not act alone. The dollar losses and downstream consequences of this criminal conspiracy are staggering. Our investigation into this criminal scheme is active and ongoing. We will use all available legal process to bring Eugeny Bogachev to stand trial in a federal courtroom in Pittsburgh. Because computer hacking and cyber theft are insidious, borderless crimes, we need to be bold, imaginative, and relentless in countering this threat. We were compelled to act against Game Over Zeus and CryptoLocker using every available civil and criminal legal means on behalf of the hundreds of thousands of victim computer users who are unwittingly infected, stolen from, and hacked. In this case, the FBI exposed a murky criminal conspiracy and followed the trail of evidence around the world and in cyberspace. The work done here was truly outstanding, and we are proud to have been part of the team. I will now turn it over to Bob Anderson of the FBI. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Good morning. Today we are announcing the latest in a string of separate indictments of overseas cyber criminals who have brazenly used technology to steal money and property from individual companies inside the United States and around the world. As I said two weeks ago on this very stage when we announced the unprecedented indictment of five Chinese military hackers, this is the new normal. That day, the FBI and DOJ also announced charges against Swedish citizen and others for allegedly distributing Black Shades, a remote access tool. Today's charges, which are not related to either of those I previously mentioned, are against the Russian citizen, Mr. Bogachev, for his alleged role as the administrator of both the Game Over Zeus botnet and the CryptoLocker malware. The infection rate, the attributes and losses, incurred by the victims of the malware and botnet make Mr. Bovachev one of the most prolific cyber actors in the world. Because of this egregious nature of his crimes, the FBI has added him to our list of the cyber's most wanted. To prevent the Game Over Zeus botnet from being reconstituted by other hackers, we've obtained court orders, as been spoken about before, authorizing us to disrupt it. We redirected the communications coming from the malicious server to a court-authorized substitute server. Game Over Zeus is the most sophisticated botnet the FBI and all of our allies have ever attempted to disrupt. We could not have done it without our partners, as been said before here on the stage of the private sector, our international law enforcement partnership, and the whole of the United States government. In fact, this is the largest fusion of law enforcement and industry partner and cooperation ever undertaken in support of an FBI cyber operation. The court orders also authorize the internet protocol addresses of victims to be provided to computer emergency readiness teams, 
around the world as well, as well to the Internet service providers to help victims remove the malware from their computers. No personal identifiable information or content of victim communications is captured during the core authorized disruption process. Today's actions are part of an operation called Clean Slate. The FBI's campaign with our partners to disrupt and dismantle botnets that pose the most significant threat to U.S. national security. The FBI's Pittsburgh, Omaha, and Washington field offices have led the Game Over Zeus investigation with the assistance of our legal attaches offices in Canada and in Germany. In addition to those here on the stage, participants in the Game Over Zeus operation include law enforcement from the Ukraine, and I must say we must thank the Ukraine government for all the cooperation with everything else that's going on in Ukraine right now with this investigation. The United Kingdom, Japan, France, the Netherlands, and Canada, as well as our European Cybercrime Center. Among the many private sector partners who assisted by helping victims remediate the damage to their computers inf infected by the Game Over Zeus botnet are as follows. The Microsoft Corporation, Dell Security Works, CrowdStrike, Newstar, Symantec, McAfee, F-Secure, Abuse CH, Affilius, Level 3 Communications, and Shadow Server. The Department of Homeland Security is playing a key role in notifying and assisting victims, including establishing a website with information about how to clean infected computers. To prevent CryptoLocker from victimizing more computers, we and our international law enforcement and private sector partners have blocked all traffic to the domains of the infected computers. Canada, Ukraine, Germany, Luxembourg assisted the FBI in identifying and seizing computer servers acting as command and control hubs for the CryptoLocker malware. Companies including Dell SecureWorks, Microsoft, Deloitte Cyber Risk Services also assisted in the operation against CryptoLocker, as did Carnegie Mellon University and Georgia Tech. Let the message be clear to would-be botnet operators and other cyber criminals that the FBI and our partners will seek out and take action against those who attack Americans and our interests. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Phyllis Schneck from DHS. Thank you very much, Executive Assistant Director Anderson, and thank you to all for being here today and all of the attention uh, that you're paying to cybersecurity as part of global security and as part of homeland security. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank the FBI for your leadership uh, in getting the bad guys. This is a reminder to every global citizen, we are constantly under attack, and the way to mitigate that is with a whole of government, whole of community, including partnership with our private sector, uh, all of our interagency partners and our international partners to use the methods uh, previously mentioned, the best of legal, the best of technological, and the best of ways to combat cybercrime and help us to continue to mitigate this so that we can absolutely enjoy our connected internet. At the Department of Homeland Security, we are charged with mitigation and response. Much of that comes through our National Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Center, you may know as the NCIC, our 24 by 7 watch center for cybersecurity and cyber action. We provide technical assistance, information dissemination rapidly, working closely with our private sector partners across all the critical infrastructures, small to medium businesses, and even to consumers. Uh, in closing, it's an honor to be here today. Again, echo many thanks to the FBI uh, and our other partners for your advancement of global cybersecurity. Thank you. We'll take some questions now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Game War Over Zeus is, I guess, the primary vehicle for CryptoLocker to get into. And, and I guess if, uh, Europeans are saying this has been a, at least a year, you guys have been investigating Game Over Zeus. Did you just sort of figure out at the near the end that CryptoLocker, which is more new, was using Game Over Zeus as the vehicle? Or was this sort of parallel things that became one? Give that to uh, David. Or I would say they're parallel things that came together as one. So you didn't know at the time that this guy was was running sort of what do you mean at the time as you point out the crypto locker really came on the scene in 2013 
Um, but we learned as we were doing the investigations on both that they were related and that they were likely run by the same individual. But you've known about Bogoshop for a long time, right? Correct. And a, a guy you've Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Um, you said this is, you know, one of the most sophisticated uh, you know, malware organizations that you've come across. Um, do you expect things to get increasingly more sophisticated? And if so, is this a drop in the bucket, or is taking down this particular <coughs> individual um, really part of a larger strategy? And also, has he been arrested? Have any arrests been made? So. Uh, no arrests have been made yet. We're working on that. Um, I think as far as what we predict the future to be, those, that's always a difficult thing to do. The, the cyber threat is always evolving, and we are always doing everything we can to uh, stay up and ahead of it. This is one of the latest successes we've had, uh, both technologically and law enforcement. We'd still like to get additional law enforcement tools that will help us, and a number of those have been proposed. Uh, but we're using every tool we have right now. And I think basically what you have to do is, as you find the new uh, generation of cyber threats, we have to develop our new generation of responses to those. Yes, please. <clears throat> Mr. Cole, you mentioned several countries that have cooperated. Is Russia one of them? And how optimistic are you that you'll get an arrest? And secondly, do you have any estimate of the number of victimized businesses in the U.S. from both of these uh, sources? Well, as far as Russia, we're in contact with them, and we've been having discussions with them uh, about moving forward and about trying to get custody of Mr. Bogachev. Uh, I think, as you can understand, those are the kinds of things we don't always talk about in detail publicly. Um, as far as the number, I think we've had some estimates, uh, roughly, of what we think is in the United States. We think about 25 percent of Game Over Zeus is in the United States, and we're estimating that anywhere between half a million and a million bots. And CryptoLocker, I think it was about half, and we estimated that it's about 200,000 so people. 350,000, 400,000 victims, roughly. You can do the math, but, you know, and, and those are estimates at this point, because obviously we're still finding out the exact mapping of it and the exact extent of it. We have some sense. And what we've recovered so far were those computers that were turned on. So over the weekend, they're not always as turned on as they are during the week. Thank you. Yes. Uh, a couple of you mentioned Ukraine and their cooperation. Uh, has the cooperation there gotten better since the uh, changeover in power there? Uh, I'll leave that probably to Bob Anderson. Thanks. Uh, the cooperation's always been good. Uh, in this incidence, uh, because of the longstanding investigation, they were extremely useful and helpful in this investigation uh, throughout the entirety of it. Yes. Um, since these crimes occurred worldwide, why are Pittsburgh and Omaha the places that charges were filed? And also, if I could ask you, get a little parochial for a minute, what was Carnegie Mellon's specific role in this? Well, as far as why those charges were filed, these cases take a long time to work up, and you start finding out what the victims are, where the victims are. They report it. We figure out where we have venue because some of the victims report it earlier than others, and then we determine who's been working on it the longest. and. These are two places, Omaha and Pittsburgh, are actually two places where we have very sophisticated and developed cyber teams, both at the U.S. Attorney's Office and with the FBI. So they also fit in that profile of being very well equipped to deal with these. And as far as Carnegie Mellon, I'll give that to you. Yeah, in addition, we have a lot of assets for the entire government in Pittsburgh. One of them is a private partnership with CMU, Carnegie Mellon University, as well as the NCFTA, the National Cyber Forensic Training Alliance, which is a public-private partnership of uh, the government and uh, private sector partners. So a lot of the assets that all of the Department of Justice uses uh, are in Pittsburgh. Um, uh, from the Russian intelligence, uh, do you have any guesses about the whereabouts of Mr. Bogachev? Uh, do you have a uh, uh, um, guess that he is, he, he, he is currently in Russia? <coughs> Uh, we have some sense these are obviously things that we're not going to be talking about publicly at this point. Our goal right now is to find him and get him into custody. Yeah. What do you, just as a logistical question, what do you encourage the government victims of crypto locker attacks to do? I imagine you don't encourage them to pay these sums. What should one do when their computer is targeted like well, this? Well, this is one of the reasons why we're trying to work with private industry to, A, find solutions, but obviously as the government, we can't impose those solutions on people. So we're working with Internet service providers. We're working with other security firms, some of the, the um, antivirus firms, to work with their customers 
to try and provide patches, to try and make uh, some adjustments to the computers, remove the malware in other ways, to try and develop solutions for all of this. So obviously we're not encouraging people to pay, but we're trying to work with the industry to find ways other than paying the ransom that we can try and get this resolved. Last question. Yes. Can you describe the uh, degree of co cooperation you've had with Russian authorities and the Russian government in bringing uh, cyber criminals to justice for and has the uh, crisis in Ukraine, uh, how has that affected this relationship? Uh, I don't think it's had a material effect on that. The law enforcement to law enforcement relationship has pretty much remained as it's always been. So it's been, how would you describe it? Pretty good? I think it's been a productive relationship. Have they turned over cyber criminals before to you? Uh, not going to go into those details other than things that are already on the public record. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.